This video is by Mark Kingston from the ARA Institute of Canterbury in Christchurch, New Zealand. So this video here is on how to um, determine a cut size for a bracket. This bracket is going to be made out of 8mm mild steel flat bar. And imagine it going over a piece of RHS to hold it down uh, tight on a surface, a couple of bolts through these faces. One leg is slightly longer than the other, so it's artificial. And I put the dimensions in in different ways. So this dimension, for instance, goes from the outside to the outside. This one goes from the outside to the inside face. This is inside to inside. And the two base lengths are from the very outside to the inside on both sides. Different sizes, just to mix it up a wee bit and show you how to do a calculation. So mild steel, 8mm. We need to determine the V-block size. It's going to be formed up on a press brake. And what we need is the V-block size and that will give us the radius. So we're just going to work that out. Okay, so what we had to do was to determine the uh, V-block size for a 8mm eight, eight piece of mild steel material. So 8 times, uh, I said you the relationship between the mild steel and the V-block was 8 times the thickness. So 8 times 8 is 64mm. So we need to come down the V-block size till we get to 64. Now there's not a 64 on the chart, there's only a 60 and an 80, uh, 65. So we're going to go with a 65 millimeter V. And if we come across, the next column is for R, which is the radius. So if we come down the R column, we find that the radius for the 65 millimeter V is 10.8 millimeters. Uh, and that's the size radius the, that we will actually be using. So if we go across the chart, up to here, you can see what the uh, the material thickness, 8mm, fits smack in the middle between 250 and 1420. 630 is the correct size and if we go up the chart it actually tells us that it's 8mm. If we had a narrower V it would take more tonnage to actually push it into the V. If we had a wider V it would take less tonnage to push it into the V. So that's how the chart works. You determine your uh, V size and that will actually tell you what size radius that you actually need. So we've determined that the V block size is uh, 65 millimetres and we determined off the chart that the radius was 10.8 millimetres. So what we have to do when we have a bracket like this is break it down into its constituent parts. So you know, we have a straight here and then a bend and a straight and a bend, straight, bend, straight, bend and a straight. So what we want to do is we want to draw in where our radius would start and finish. So you can see very clearly I've got those pieces. So this straight I'm going to call A, this bend is B, this straight is C, bend D, straight E, bend F, straight G, bend H, and straight I. So we want to determine all the lengths of those. So A equals... Uh, F, G, H, and I. So we're going to work out the length for all of those. So the very first one we have as 68 millimetres and what we need to take off from the inside is the material thickness, which is 8 millimetres, obviously, at this point, And our radius is 10.8. So we start off uh, with 68 millimetres. So we've got 68 millimetres minus 8 millimetres material thickness minus 10.8 for the radius. And that gives us a length for the straight. 49.2 millimetres. So I'm going to go through and do all the straights first and then I'll work out the lengths for the corners and um, load those in. So the next straight here is from the outside to the inside. So we're not going to take off an 8 millimetre thickness here but we have to take off 8 millimetres here, a 10.8 for a radius there and a 10.8 for a radius there. So back over to here, 
what did I say? It's 192. 192 minus one material thickness and minus two times the radius. And that gives us, for C, 162.4 millimetres. Just check that. Yep. Right. 138. We're only taking off, because it's going from inside to inside, we only have to take off the two radiuses. We don't need to take off the material thicknesses. So 138 minus 2 times 10.8 equals. So E is 116.8. Four millimeters. G. What do we got for G? We got two hundred and fifteen, and it's going from the very outside to the very outside. Take off a material thickness. Take off a radius. Take off a radius. Take off a material thickness. So we've got two hundred and fifteen millimeters minus two times the material thickness. I'm going to push equals there, and then minus two times the ten point eight equals. So G is 177.4, 177.4 millimetres. And we're down to the last one, which is I, straight for I. So 75 from the outside to the outside. So take off a material thickness, take off a radius, off 75. So 75 minus 8 minus 10.8 equals 56.2 millimetres. They are all our straights. We're going to add all those together shortly. Right, the bends. Now when we do a bend, it works if, you, if we draw a circle of the material thickness, this being uh, this distance across here, 8 millimetres, and the radius from the centre to this point here, drawn that a bit small, is 10.8. When we uh, do our calculation, we find that we're actually working to the, this mean line. That's the length that we're going to determine. The formula for that is 2 times pi times radius uh, plus a half material thickness. Close bracket. Now that gives us the length for a full circle. Uh, but I want to break it down into its 90 degree components. 4 times 90 degrees is 360 degrees, which is a full circle, but I want to determine the length for each corner. So there's four corners in 360, so we're going to divide it by 4 at that point, and that'll give us an answer for the length per corner. So into the calculator, 2 times pi times bracket, radius is 10.8, uh, plus half the material thickness. Well, I can do it. I'll do, do um, 0.5 times, uh, what do we got? 8 mil thickness, close bracket, and then divide by uh, 4. Gives us a length per corner of 23 point, how many decimal places? I'm going to go to 2.5. I'm going to go to um, 2 decimal places. So B, the length around this portion here is 23.25, D is 23.25, F is 23.25, and H is 23.25. So as you can see, we've got all the lengths there on the board. So we're going to work out the total cut length. So total cut length. And that's adding all those together. So on the calculator, uh, what have we got? 20, uh, sorry, 49.2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add, uh, actually I'm going to go back a step. I'm going to do 23.25 times 4, which gives me all my corners added together at once. So there we go, we've got it on the screen, it's 93 millimetres, and there I'm going to add those straights back into it. So plus 49.2 plus 162.4 plus 116.4 plus 177.4 
and the last straight of 56.2 equals. Now cut length, total cut length is 654.6 millimetres. Well, you'd go and round that up, wouldn't you? You'd round that up to 655 millimetres. So immediately you can go to the steel rack and cut a piece of bar at 654 millimetres long or 655 millimetres long and now we want to, the, the next thing that we would do when we want to form it up we're actually going to work out where our fold positions are and our fold positions when we hit it with the tooling on the press brake is going to come straight through the centre of each corner. So we can work out the position for the first fold what that's going to be is 23.25 divided by 2. Because that's half, it's actually going through half the corner length. The corner length was 23.25. We're going to cut that in half. So I've just done that on the calculator. And I need to add the first straight to that, which is 49.2. So our first fold position on the bar from the end to this position here would be 60.825. Now you'd round that to 61 millimetres. So the next position for our next fold is going to be this straight, a full bend, this straight and half a bend. So on the calculator I'm going to go back 23.25 divided by 2. That gives me half this bend here. I'm going to add the full bend in there of plus 23.25 plus my first straight which is 49.2 and my second straight here C which is 162.4 so my next fold position on the bar, I'm not going to draw this in proportion, going from this end to this point here is uh, 246 Point, uh, point four seven five. so you'd round that, what, to 246 from there to there. Now that's going to be on the opposite side of the bar, isn't it? Because it's these two folds are on one side of the bar, and these two folds are on the inside of the bar. So this one I'll draw just as a dotted line across the bar with a very rough finger mark on the screen. So the next fold position from the very end so uh, this fold position here, go back to the calculator, 23.25 was for the corner, so divide that by 2. And we're going to add in plus 2 corners, 2 times 23.25 plus A, 49.2, 49.2 plus C, 162.4 plus E, 116.4 equals. So we've got 386 millimetres from the very end of the bar to our next fold, this one here. 386 point, what did I say? 125, writing it really accurately. So you can see you'd round that to 386 anyway. You wouldn't worry about anything else. Now that's on the inside of the bar again. So I'm just going to put my dotted marks across there with my fat finger. Because they're on uh, the other side of the bar. And then our last fold. Well what I'm going to do this time. I'm simply going to add the straight to it. And the two half corners which give me a corner length. So the straight is G. 177.4 plus a full corner because we've got two halves. So 23.25 equals. So from the very end to this next fold, where am I going to put that? I'm going to describe a line up here and put a line. So I'm going right across here. We've got 586. 0.775, that 5 is a really rough looking one, that's even smeared it all around the board. So 586.775, you'd round that to 587 millimetres and be comfortable with that. 
And if we just work out, we'll take our 586.775 and we'll just work out and make sure that I've got this correct here. So 654.6 minus 586.775 equals, it's saying that this distance from the end to here would be 67.825 millimetres. And that is actually, if I minus 56 off that, so I shouldn't have wiped that off the screen, 67.825 minus 56.2. We come back to 11.625. Uh, if we times that by 2, that gives us the length for our corner. So we've worked it out extremely accurately. Uh, how to do a bracket. We have to take off certain components. We break it down into our straights and our circles or our bends for a start. Add them all together to get our total cut size, which was this figure here. And then I stepped across adding them until I got to my first fold point, added the next components into my next fold point, next components, next fold point, next components to the next fold point. So that's how you would work out a cut length for a bracket. Um, looks complicated, it's taken me a few minutes to do that but you can actually work it out very very quickly on a calculator, on a piece of paper with a calculator. Um, you have to determine the, uh, you had to determine the V block size which gave you the radius so you could only get the radius after you determine the V block size. We were using mild steel. The rule of thumb for uh, the relationship between the 8mm mild steel thickness and the V-block, well, uh, mild steel for a V-block is 8mm um, mild steel, you times it by 8, and that actually gives you 64mm. We didn't have the 64mm on the chart, I showed you that it was 65, so you times mild steel by 8 to get your V-block size, which we used as 65, and that gave us our radius from there. Uh, I don't have much more to say about that. I'll leave that one with you. Thank you.